Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, we're going to be designing and making layered shadow boxes, which look like this. So we've got lots of different layers in there in all different shades of blue to make up the shape of the cat. But you can do this with any image. I'll show you how to choose an image in Design Space and then add the layers using the offset tool. And then we'll cut it out and stick it all together to make that lovely 3D layered effect. Now, if you'd rather do this with text rather than an image, so to perhaps spell out a name which you could put onto a wall, then this video will also show you how to do that. I have a little example. This one isn't in a frame, but I've used this same technique on the L, the V and the E, and then I just did a little heart instead of the O. So it's got those same layers with all the different colors. Let's see how to recreate it in Cricut Design Space. The first thing we need to do is to select our image. So I'm gonna go into images and then search for cat. You want to find a silhouette image so everything is all one color. It can be easiest to find them if you go into layers in the left and choose single. And then that'll filter out anything that's got multiple layers so you'll see more of the silhouette style images. I'm going to choose this one of the cat. So let's press insert images. And then I'll make it a bit bigger so you can see. So we're going to make all of the different layers for the shadow box inside the cat first before we add it to the squares that will make the frame. To do this, click into offset. Now the offset tool is fairly new to design space. You need to be on a Windows 10 computer for it to work or higher and a 64 bit system if you are on Windows. And there's also a minimum Mac OS level you need as well. You can find that in the description of this video. The offset feature is only available on the desktop version of Design Space and not the mobile app. So if you're using the mobile app, then unfortunately you won't be able to follow along. If your offset feature doesn't work, then check the link in the description of this video as I've got another video in there which is all about the offset feature and it includes some tips on how to get it working if you find that it's not working on your computer but you're sure that your computer does have at least the minimum necessary specs. All right, so normally with an offset, it creates another layer on the outside of your shape. You can see it's kind of previewing that here with the blue line. We want to do the opposite for this and make the layers appear inside of the silhouette shape. So to do that, drag the little slider so that it starts being a negative number and then have a play about until you're happy with the distance. I find it's easiest if you choose a nice round number. So I'm going to go minus 0.2 and then press apply. And that's made my first inset for me. Let's make it a different color so I can see it. And now with that same layer, so the green one still selected. There we go, it's selected. I'm going to go into offset again. Now it's remembered that my last offset was minus 0.2, so that's good. You want to make sure it's the same number so that all your layers are the same size. Let's press apply and now I have another one. So let's change the color on this. And I'm actually not happy with this tiny gap in the feet, so I'm going to take that out. So down on the bottom right, you can press contour. And if there are any little pieces you don't want, just click into them and then close out of this window and they'll be gone. Let's do the offset again. So click into offset. I'm set at minus 0.2 still. So press apply and now I have one more layer. Let's make this one purple. You could keep going with as many different layers as you want, but I think I'm happy with that. So now we need to select everything by pressing select all. And then over at the top of the layers panel, press group. This has grouped all the layers together so they can now be moved about as one. Next, we need to make the square. First things first, measure your shadow box. You will need to measure the spacer which comes inside your frame to know how big to make your squares in design space. So 
So here's my ruler and my spacer and you want to measure from edge all the way to the other edge. So mine is 6.5 inches which is what I'll need to make the square. If your frame is rectangular then you'll need to measure both sides so that you can get a rectangle that's exactly the correct size to fit in your frame. Now that I know my shadow box is 6.5 inches I can go into shapes and choose a square. I want to resize this to the size that I measured, so mine would be 6.5 inches wide and 6.5 inches tall. We then want to duplicate this square, so we have one for every layer of our silhouette shape. So my cat is four layers, plus we also need one to be the very bottom layer, so that will be five squares in total. I've got one here, so I can just press the duplicate button four times. And now there are five. I want to recolor these so that they're the same color as my cat layers. I just find that a little bit easier to work with. So let's just go in and choose each of the colors that are in the cat. And then you'll have one left over, so that's okay to be left as gray. Drag a box around all of your squares and then go into a line and then center and that's put them one on top of the other next take your cat and it or your shape whatever you're doing and it might appear under the squares for now if it does go into a range center front and now it'll be on the top and now we can move this to where we want it to go so make it a bit smaller and the belt there, but I want it exactly in the middle. So to do that, press select all and then go into align and center. And that's put the cat exactly in the middle of all of those squares. Now it's time to cut the cat shape out of the squares. So let's go into the group first and then press ungroup to put all the layers separate again. So I'm going to click on my top layer of the cat, which is the purple one. Press control on my keyboard and choose the purple square. You can also do it with shift on your keyboard instead of the control key. It does the same thing. With these two selected, down the bottom, I'm going to press slice. And that will cut the two shapes out from each other. So now you can see in the layers panel, I'm left with three different layers. Two of them are that inside shape and I don't need those so I can click on them and press delete on my keyboard and then I've just been left with the square. I'm going to hide this layer by clicking the eye icon next to it. So now I can see the blue square. So let's click the blue cat layer, press control or shift on your keyboard and choose the blue square and then press slice. Delete the two layers that are like the inside of the cat and keep the one that has the square shape and then hide it and then do the same thing again for the other layers that you have left so there's the green one and then i'm going to do the same thing for that yellow one and that is now all of my layers so i can turn them back on by pressing the eye icon and you see mine actually are in the correct order still, but if yours aren't, so maybe you had something which looks like this and they're not in the right order, you can just drag and drop them to get them into the right order. And you know when they're in the right order because it means you can see all of the colors. So here is my cat and it's now ready for me to cut out. So I'm just going to group everything together one more time. So let's go select all and then group. I just like having everything grouped in case I decide to move it about or to resize it. But as I know this is going in a shadow box, I'm actually going to keep it at this size. If you want to at this point, you can change the color of the layers to what color you're actually going to cut them out from. So I'm going to do my first layer as white and then the other layers on the inside I would do from different shades of blue and make that one a really dark one. So it's quite nice to do that as it gives you a better idea of how it's gonna look when it's cut out. So now I'm ready, I can click make it. 
and then it will show me all of the different colours. If you want to, you can change the paper size from 12 by 12 by clicking in the drop down. I'll be cutting mine out of A4 paper, so I'd need to do that for every single colour. And then one more. Now you'll notice that these aren't necessarily in order down the left hand side. I've got the lightest two blues, but then it's showing me the darkest blue before the third darkest. So when you're cutting it out, be really, really careful that you're cutting the right bit out of the right shade of your card. After you've hit continue, it will connect to your Cricut and then you can follow the steps on the screen to cut everything out from cardstock. Here are all my layers cut out and ready to be stuck together. I've placed them in the correct order just so that I can check I'm happy with all the colours. It's much easier to go ahead and change things and cut other colours now rather than when you're trying to stick it together. I've got my white on the outside and then I'm going from my lightest blue all the way down to the darkest as the layers go inwards. I'm happy with how this looks so let's stick it together. I'm going to start with the very bottom square and then the one that sits above it, which is this one. I'm going to use 3D foam pads to stick the layers together because it will give a nice amount of depth between them and make it look really 3D. If you don't have foam squares, you can glue the layers together as well and it will still look really nice, you just won't get as much of that 3D effect. The foam pads that I like best are these from Dot and Dab. You can get them on Amazon and I'll drop a link in the description of this video. So I've got some over here that I've already opened. Now these foam pads are quite big so I'm going to cut them in half so I don't have to use as many. Just because I like kind of getting as much as I can out of all my craft supplies. So if I can get away with using less, I will. <laughs> Alright, so here are my bottom two layers and I'm going to take the one with the shape cut out and turn it upside down. And now I can add my foam pieces on the back. So I'm going to add some around the edge and you want to make sure you've got some kind of all the way around so it's going to have a good stick and be nice and firm. So I think three on each side will be a good amount. Now if you've got card that doesn't show through, so coloured card normally is fine, then I would recommend putting some foam pads in the middle spaces as well. It's going to give it a lot more stability and it'll stop it from sagging in the middle under the weight of the other layers because you've got this extra pieces for um, the card to sort of keep itself upright with. If your shadow box, if you're planning on cutting it all from white and then having LED lights behind it to shine through, then you don't want to add the foam pads in the middle because when you put the lights on, it will show them all up as little rectangles. But if you're just doing it like me with coloured card, then adding the foam pads into the inside will work. You can get transparent or see-through foam uh, pads they're more sort of plasticky than foam, I think. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the brand name because I haven't used them before. I think it might be Zots. So uh, if you are looking to do it from white card with light shining through, then you might want to look into getting some of them so that you can still have the stability in the middle, but when you put the lights on, then hopefully they won't show up because they'll be transparent. Okay, so now I want to stick these two layers together. I'm going to line it up against one edge and then I'm just going to gently drop it into place to start with to make sure I'm happy with how it's lined up. That's looking pretty good, so now I can just push down gently on all of those foam pads to get them nice and stuck. And now we just need to do the same thing for all the other layers. So this is my next one. Turn it upside down and add some foam. Now I've got all the foam, I can bring back in those bottom layers and stick this one on. So I'm going to do the same thing, line it up 
There we go. And then just let it drop down. Check I'm happy and then push to seal. The reason we're letting it drop down is that if it's not in the correct place, it will be quite easy to pull back up and try again. So now I'm on to the next layer, which is this one. Turn it upside down and once again, add all of the foam pads. Now the foam pans are on, I can bring in the part we've already done and once again line this up against one of the edges, let it drop down and then push when you're happy. And now there's only one layer left which is my top one. There we are, and that is now all the layers stuck together. So you can see how adding the foam gives it all of that depth and it's looking really pretty and it's ready to go in the frame. So here is my frame. And you might find with your designs that they sit too far forward inside the shadow box because it's not quite as deep as that original space was. So I'm not putting the spacer in the frame because it won't fit now. So what I've done, just to give it a bit of distance from the front of the frame, is I've just put some blue tack inside. Now it would be better if you had the white version of blue tack, um, because otherwise you can kind of see the blue a little bit. Not if you look at it straight on, but if you look at it from the side, it sort of peeks through. But this is a really cheap and easy way to just push your design back from the glass a little bit if you want some more space inside your frame. You don't have to do that, it's completely optional. A prettier and sort of neater way to do it would be to use foam pads along the side. Because those are white like the frame, they're not gonna show up as much. Or you could even use your Cricut to cut a square of um, craft foam out of white and uh, so you'd need to measure the gap in the frame to make sure you get that thin border but if you put a couple of layers of craft foam all the way around that would actually be the most neat way to do it because you wouldn't see any little foam pads or anything you just have that continuous square so it's up to you if you want to do that to add some extra depth or not but I do quite like it uh, with the blue tack because it's nice and easy to remove in the future if I decide I want to use the frame for anything else so I'm just going to drop this in, make sure I've got it the right way up, and it's going to sit on top of that blue tack. Now I haven't put the glass in my frame at the moment because otherwise it would just catch on my camera lights and you wouldn't actually be able to see inside. So yours would have the glass in, but mine doesn't for now. Put the back on and now I can close this up. And you kind of see what I was saying about it sitting forward in the shadow box. There's a lot of gap underneath these tabs. So I could maybe do another layer of blue tack on top of what I've already got to push it even further to the back. But let's turn it upside down and see what we've got. So this is looking really nice now inside the shadow box. And it's all ready to go up on the wall. Well, as soon as I put the glass in after I'm finished with the video. You can do a similar technique to make the style of shadow boxes out of text instead of images. So here's one I've made with the letters to spell out the word love and then I used a heart instead of the O. To do this we're going to do things slightly different and instead of making an insert of the letters like we did with the cat, we're going to use an offset instead. And that's because quite often your letters are fairly thin so if you try to add the layers inside then you're not going to be able to fit very many in. So I'll show you how to do this. Let's go into text and I'm going to type an S for Sarah. I'll just hide this loved one so it's easy to see what I'm doing now. 
So here's my S and then I want to add offsets for all of the different layers. So let's go into offset and I want to choose probably square corners, not the curved ones, as that gives you a better effect when doing this style of layer, particularly if you're doing letters like A's, H's, I's that have, you know, quite defined corners on them. So this time I want to give it a positive number in the offset. So instead of minus 0.2, I'll do just 0.2. Press apply. And let's change the color so we can see it. And then do it again. So now I'm offsetting that offset with a different one. And I'll just do one more for this test. Um, let's make it yellow. And there we have it. So that's the four different layers. So let's drag a box around these and group them so I can move them out the way. And then now we're going to cut the letters out of the square. So we'll choose a square. I'll use the same 6.5 inches. And my S is four layers. And then I'll need one for the base. So that's five squares again. So duplicate that. And then I will make one of these all the different colors. And then I'll go a purple for that base layer because I've used the gray on one of the others. There we go. Let's drag a box around all of these squares and go align center to put them one on top of the other. And then drag my S. I need to go arrange center front make it smaller and then to perfectly center it drag that box around everything and go align center now i can start cutting things out so click on the group and ungroup it to make all of those layers so that we can work with them and then i'll start with the gray one so i've got the gray s selected press ctrl or shift on my keyboard and choose the gray square and then press slice. Delete the two layers that still look like the letter until you're left with the one that has the outline of the square. And now we're just doing exactly the same as we did for the cat one, but for all of these other layers. So I'm just going to whiz through these really quickly to get them done. There we are. And now I can turn these on. And everything's still in the right order, so that's good. Let's change the colors to um, the blues again. Darker one. And then one more really dark blue. And there you go. So that's exactly the same style of shadow box, but we've got the um, letter rather than text. Now this one I have just noticed, you see that blue layer kind of connects where it joins the corner of the S to the middle. That might cause some problems when we try and stick on the white layer if the little white bit in there, it might cut separately. So you might just need to stick it on, you know, on its own rather than it being joined. But that should be absolutely fine. You just need to be aware that you don't throw out that little bit of white when you cut it out. Okay, so there we go. That's two different ways to do the same style of shadow box with images and text. And here's what it looks like when you do the same kind of design, but with letters instead of an image. So hopefully you can see all of the layers in that. It's looking really pretty. I think actually it catches the light best if I hold it like that. But you can see all those layers going down and I think it works really well on this because I've got the white on the front and then I start with my darkest colour and then slowly move to the lightest so it really shows up the depth and all of those different layers. And here we have the finished shadow box design. It looks lovely with all those different layers peeking through and it's going to look fabulous up on my wall and yours will look great on your wall too. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut Craft tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.